I guess another topic, we, we talked about the costs of specialty pharmacy. I think uh, by the year 2020, it's believed that specialty drugs will account for over 50% of a pharmacy benefit. But it's help on the way. We have biosimilars, we may have biogenerics. Um, how do you anticipate biosimilars playing a role in the marketplace, Cheryl? That's very interesting. Several discussions are going on around biosimilars today. Um, and I think from our perspective where we sit, we really look at the states, how each state is looking at and will handle uh, the biosimilars, whether it be state mandates for um, substitution or notification prior to substitution. I think also uh, important to consider will be the payers. So at this point, you know, as we look at prescriptions that come in our door today, we're looking at what the doctor wrote, then we investigate the patient's benefit to understand what the payer mandates are. So where payers come in uh, and, and weigh on these biosimilars is going to really affect how specialty pharmacies deal with this. I agree with that. Um, in addition, I think the million dollar question is whether or not these biosimilars are going to be interchangeable. Yes. That will definitely affect how they're prescribed, you know, how the pharmacies dispense them. Um, but also, um, understanding that the brand manufacturers are not going away. So it's, it's a little different than in the small molecule world where, you know, when a uh, generic enters the market, then the brand is no longer marketed. It, it's really, you know, it's still sold. In some cases, they, they leave the market, but the brand manufacturers are still gonna be there, and they have services and rebates and contracting um, that can compete with the biosimilars. So when you think about it from a payer perspective, I, I don't think a payer can rely entirely on all of their savings to come from biosimilars. I think they will see savings, but it will depend on how they place the product, um, whether they cover it, um, and that will also depend on you know, education in terms of will the providers prescribe it? Will they understand? Will the patients be willing to take it as well? So I think there's a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of work that's yet to be done um, before we can get you know too excited about yeah, biosimilars. I, I agree. I think pharma will play a big role here. Will they be launching these products as interchangeable generics with the savings that you often see with generics or will they be simply launched as a new brand product into crowded, into crowded disease states? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that'll be interesting. It may give the opportunity for a specialty pharmacist to play a bigger role. I mean, do you see a, a bigger role, Renee, in, in the specialty pharmacist differentiating and selecting or biosimilars? Right. I think their role entirely will be education. So education to the providers, education to the payers. I'm sorry, education to the patients, and then understanding the payers in terms of coverage and being able to do the pull through, um, you know, for the patients and, and get the biosimilars to be utilized. I think another aspect to think about when we think about biosimilars coming in, um, how will the biosimilar manufacturers support this drug in the channel? Because as Renee said, the branded products aren't going away. Uh, the, the branded products have support there for the patients, um, supported these drugs through wraparound services at specialty pharmacies. Um, will the biosimilar manufacturers support their products in the same fashion? I think that's going to be a very interesting piece of it, right? So in, in, in the pharma world, it's all about market share. So a, a pharmaceutical company that's launching a biosimilar is, is thinking strategies, how am I getting the market share? And they may look at um, limited distributed networks as a plus or a minus. So, um, you know, my thoughts are, because you've already seen some limited distributed drugs go generic and then the limited distribution network go away, in a biosimilar, do, does the company that launches try to offer a broader uh, market to, to win market share? Um, but it, without a doubt, the pharmacist and specialty pharmacy will play a huge role in educating the, the provider and the patient. Um, and, and really, the payer will, will lay the landscape of what's covered, what the advantages of, and, and if there's a cost savings, obviously, that'll be a big driver. To, to move the ball towards a biosimilar. And with how the drugs are handled differently state by state, if those regulations um, continue on towards implementation, um, the role of the specialty pharmacist will be huge in understanding exactly what needs to be documented and done uh, prior to dispensing a biosimilar for a particular patient, dependent upon where they reside. Yeah, I think it's an opportunity for pharmacists to even become more educated. They're, they're gonna be dispensing drugs that are not only brand name drugs, but biosimilars. 
Uh, there's, there's 20 to 25 new drugs uh, approved each year. Uh, how are they going to keep up clinically and even from a business perspective? Now you're seeing certifications pop up in the industry. Uh, you have the Specialty Pharmacy Certification Board that's actually making certified specialty pharmacists. Uh, and I think that could be key in, in manufacturers choosing pharmacies in the future to distribute their products. So uh, we, I think we have some interesting times ahead of us in yes. that regard. Any other comments on, on biosimilars? <coughs> okay. Stay tuned. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Um,